Okay, we here we are in an unnamed mountain range. Well, I just don't want to share it with you. I don't want to tell you where it is because I want you coming out here. In a Mojave Desert, look at those tilted limestone rocks. See how the bedding plane is going like that? And then right over to the right, you get uh, you get some uh, granite rocks. You get some Mesozoic granitics, and you got a little mine right there. Like I said, the point of contact between two different kinds of rocks, two different, uh, you know, say limestone and uh, intrusive igneous, that's what makes the miners horny. And so that's why we're going to go in and look at it. What's going on right there? Look at all that shit. Nice little wash. We'll go in there and check it out. Our Candea emorii, the desert lavender, just coming up on the wash right there. Smells pretty good. Mint family lamiaceae. Covered in the wool, the hairs, the trichomes, tiny flowers like so many desert plants. Because if you get big flowers, you're going to lose a lot more moisture. They're going to dry out pretty readily. So you keep those flowers small. Look at this little wash that's just been gouged out. Point of contact! Look at this buckwheat over here. Look at this, this one's nice. It looks like an Areogonum inflatum that's lost its inflated stem. Look at those leaves down there. Look at that. Oh, they got a nice texture to them. They're not too fuzzy on the underside. And then here's the flowers, which have not opened up yet. You got an involucre on a long uh, peduncle and then that, in, that uh, involucre, that main inflorescence right there. You got all those tiny little buckwheat flowers spilling out of it like a little vase. Each with nine stamens. Weird, right? All the areagonum's got nine stamens. But there's that involucre. The vase that holds the flowers. Look at it. So what's going on with the buckwheats? This is supposed to be areagonum inflatum. You can see that inflated stem. Some of them don't have it. There's the flowers. Tiny little flowers. Like so many buckwheats in the desert, you got tiny flowers and photosynthetic stems. And there's those nine stamens. Oh, nice little pattern on that. Nine stamens, six tables. And a, oh, look, the fuzzy teeples, ooh. I'm gonna climb up this little wash. You got some argemony blooming, some prickly poppy, and celia. Nearly indestructible. Does kind of look like hell right now, though. It's, it's a dry spring. Didn't get a good rain in Mojave. Look at that, just how many thousands of years worth, worth of, uh, of, you know, water and creeks and what the shit. Washing the alluvium down. How, what does it represent? Consolidated material. So all this stuff, the alluvium, you can see all the different, everything's just been almost uh, layered. I mean, it is it has been layered on the walls of this wash. You know, what year do you think this washed down from up above? This is all nice, but we want to go to the limestone because this is where all the good stuff is going to be. It's where all, where all the good plants are going to be. Look, so to your right, you got the intrusive igneous rocks, the uh, cool slowly underground over a million or two million years from the Jurassic. Well, it said Mesozoic, so let's not be presumptuous, but that could be Jurassic. Okay, could be Cretaceous too. And then to your left, you got the much older Cambrian that's, uh, what is it, roughly 500 million years ago? Cambrian marine rocks. When the trilobites were around and doing their thing, you know, before they got knocked out in the Permian. So these were already here. When these intruded. And so what happened was these cooked these, secondarily altered them a little bit, and they made all the nice stuff that's making all these all these miners horny right now. I don't really care for it, you know. I like rocks, don't get me wrong, but you know, you catch me out here looking at the plants. I'm not gonna come dig a fucking hole and hang out with the donkey drunk on whiskey for six months, you know, looking for something that's gonna make me rich so I can buy three sports cars. You know, I don't give a shit about that. Kind of fucking boring. Anyway, let's keep going out, see what we got up there. Oh, see that? Look, there we go. There's a limestone. Tear pants limestone. Nice texture to it. And there's a claim pole for a miner. Now, I don't know what they do when they get up here. They're out here stashing porno in little band-aid boxes, you know, along with their claims. I got no idea. But you see these little poles everywhere. Got a couple over there, too. But I see this is the limestone that's been secondarily altered. You got some nice mossy moss right there. Look at the color in it. We got Pleurocoronis pleurisita right down there. Arrow leaf, one of the most fragrant and pleasant smelling plants in all of uh, the Mojave. And then over here we got Sphorelsia. And we got Salvia funeria, the funeral sage, not in flower. Tiny purple flowers when it blooms. Same uh, family as that uh, desert lavender you've seen growing down there in the washes. Look at the texture on it. You ever seen secondarily altered limestone before? Probably, it's not that uncommon. 
You know, marble is a form of secondarily altered limestone, but doesn't it, it kind of makes you hot. Does it make you hot a little bit? It could. I see, I tell you, man, deserts, you see the coolest stuff evolutionarily. Look at that, look at this thing. Covered in wool, leaves that taper into a spike. I don't even know how it's surviving. How do you, how do you be a perennial plant in the hottest desert, hottest, driest desert, desert in North America? I don't know. Look at the nice patina, too, okay? You could get the most flamboyant and wonderful interior designer, and they couldn't do, they couldn't make the inside of your, your apartment look as nice as this looks right here. No way. Here's, look, here's the Trixus Californica, Asteraceae, Mutisioid subfamily. Most of that subfamily is in South America. So how'd this guy get up here? Not in bloom. We don't give a shit. It's fine. You could smoke those leaves if you wanted to. You could even put them in your ass. I might do that later. Certainly, though, they did have a, a importance among indigenous people. They were used uh, for smoking on what they shit before. Beautiful yellow daisy flowers when they're, when they're blooming. You often see them just growing right out the rock. Look at that. Growing right out the rock like that. How do you do that? But also, you see, I've seen them growing on granite, too. They're not picky about the limestone. Oh, hang on, hang on. Hey, look, there, we got one in flower. Look at those tiny little bastards. Look at it. What a marvelous plant. Jewel of the Mojave. You got, actually, there's a bunch of jewels of the Mojave. Oh, look at that. Look at these got the tiny flowers. Who's pollinating that? Can't be offering that much nectar. But you got a zygomorphic, that's just a fancy word botanists use to say bilaterally symmetrical. A zygomorphic, aka bilaterally symmetrical flower, coming right out those leafy bracts. All those leaves clustered together looking like little goddamn Q-tips in there. Look at it, isn't it? It's perfect, isn't it? Isn't that nice? You can see that little style poking out. Whole flower is what? It's got to be, look at that, the whole flower is barely a centimeter long, shorter than a centimeter. Who else we got going off in these uh, wild rock gardens? Oh, there's a Physalis up there, Solanaceae. How do they do that? See those little yellow flowers? It's hot as balls. They didn't get much rain. How the hell is that guy going off? He doesn't even seem to have that many hairs. What's his strategy? Look at that guy. Look at it. Just blooming right out the rock. Then we got this guy, Coffee Family. A member of the genus Gallium. Wonder which one it is. Look at it. Look, spiky leaves. Little whorls of leaves, interpetiolar stipules, like most of the Rubiaceae, the coffee family. Let me see if I can give you a good example, though, because I could just say interpetiolar stipules, and it don't mean nothing for you. You got to know what the fuck I'm talking about. Let me see if I can get in there. Nice. No, you can't, because you got those whorls. Anyway, an interpetiolar stipules just looks like opposite leaves, and then there's a line going between each leaf. So just leaves that are opposite each other on the stem. Looks like those things went to fruit already. Look at those spiky fruits. A lot of different galliums out there. Most of them are boring. Some of them are weedy. The ones that grow in the Mojave Desert are fucking spectacular. Look at that. So this is the old bedding plain. This was the horizontal surface of the ocean back in the day. Or surface of the floor of the ocean. And now it's just created a wonderful little, a wonderful little uh, native rock garden. A nice uh, substrate for these uh, wonderful plants to grow on. There's that plural coronis, that arrow leaf. That smells so nice. See that? See what I call it, early? Holy shit. There's a nice funeral sage. Just growing right out the rack. Right out the... But you're not going to see it growing over there. Wrong, uh, wrong geology. Wrong geology and chemistry. Yeah, look at... Look, it's a nice shrub. If only you could grow this. I've never seen anybody successfully cultivate this. Because look, it's growing right out of rock. Right out of rock. If you were to grow it... In soil, it fucking rot. You know, you need, I mean, you'd need some really fast draining mineral soil. God, what a great plant though. It'd be so nice to put in a yard somewhere, you know, after you killed the lawn. So this was, this was the bedding plane. This was the, again, that's the floor that all the calcareous ooze, calcium rich ooze was laid down in the middle of the ocean. Oh, I love this. Called it, called a pygmy cedar, but no relation to the genus Cedrus at all. Again, true cedars only occur uh, on the east side of the Atlantic. You know, Middle uh, Middle East, North Africa, Asia, the Himalayas. Anyway, this is a Pusophyllum shoddy. I just remember the sunflower family. So it looks like a conifer, but it's in the Asteraceae. And look at those leaves. Those, it's not using hairs to adapt to life in the desert. It's using wax. Waxy-ass leaves. Look at that little uh, discoid yellow uh, 
daisy flowers when it blooms. And again, growing straight out of rack. This thing grows, she'll get up here without breaking my ass. This thing grows in Southern Utah too, like Southwest Utah, which is still technically Mojave Desert. Did you know that? Did you know the Mojave Desert goes up into Southwest Utah, Washington, Washington County? They're gonna have some troubles there with their water issues. What a shithole, they're just suburbanizing and strip mauling that whole fucking area. It's just such a beautiful area, they're gonna make it look like Connecticut. Speaking of marble, secondarily altered limestone, metamorphous limestone, that's what this appears to be. Cooked limestone. Because remember, the limestone was here first, and then that came later, that Mesozoic granitics. Mesozoic intrusive racks. What do you got there? Oh, that looks good. Very iron rich. Okay, see, so we're literally on the point of contact. Those are intrusive igneous rocks, cooled very slowly over a million, two million years from some magma. And then right here is the limestone. And as that was hot as balls, it cooked some of this limestone. This is what I'm trying to explain to you. Again, look at the bedding plane. Don't you love the bedding plane? It's only had 500 million years to get all warped and degraded and secondarily altered and, and whatnot. The moon looks nice. You see that? Isn't that nice? Nobody out here, just me being obnoxious as hell and very loud. Okay, there's some lichen too. Maybe uh, Acherospora. What's that guy? Kerry Knudsen. You got to talk to Kerry Knudsen about that. He studied these guys. Dormant right now, but they get wet, they come right to life. Got a lichen and a fungus and maybe a yeast in there. How'd you do that? Look at that rock. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful patinas. Beautifulpatinas.com. God, the goddamn color. And then it just cooked the limestone too. I want to take this with, but it's going to tear my pants. See, it's got a very abrasive texture to it. Nice for removing those bunions. You know, this doesn't look like intrusive igneous. This looks like, uh, this looks like cooked mudstone. But who knows, you know? Point of contact. I just like saying point of contact. The shit is this stuff. Look at it. You got some slight striations in there. Huh? You having a hard time? He's old. He's a senior. Okay? Go easy on America's seniors. And uh, here's a plant that doesn't give a shit about geology whatsoever. This is a... This is Homolocephala. It used to be a kino cactus. You know these fucking cactus guys. They're dicking around, writing papers trying to get their names published, but I guess this one's valid. This is not related to the species in a genus Echinocactus. It's more closely related to species in a, you know, I don't know where the fuck they picked Homolocephala, nor do I care. Don't even, don't, even, don't comment. I'll figure it out. If I care it, I read the paper. Again, I don't. But you can see Polycephalus is the species name. So Homolocephala, now it's Polycephala, but multi-headed. Cotton top cactus, betaline pigments in those damn spines, beautiful spines. This guy looks like he's struggling. You can see those uh, accordion, those ribs are all accordion then, indicating drought stress. But he'll be fine, hopefully. It looks like that guy died. Anyway, uh, when they flower, they're nice. You know, they look real good. They get the cottony fruits. That's why they call them the cotton pop cactus. I don't know how the fuck anything gets in there to harvest those fruits and disperse the seed. Probably some bird does because they're hidden beneath a, uh, a cage of spines. Anyway, there you go. Nice Mojave species will grow on volcanics, will grow on uh, limestone. Oh, that's nice, the sun's going down. Look at these racks. Found these nice, uh, rather sharp, silica-rich racks. Almost breaking with a conchoidal fracture. What could it be? Some sort of uh, silica precipitate. You can see that banding in there, nice. That's nice. Anyway, that's all I got for you tonight. Have a good rest of your day, go fuck yourself, bye. Oh, these, these beaver tail cacti look stressed as hell, on the verge of death. Oh, Puncha basilaris. They should be plump and blue and flowering instead they're about to die. Oh, look, there's a nice milkweed down there. Nice stem milkweed. Look at that. Holy shit. Leafless stem milkweed. Let's go see that. Yeah, there we go. How's that for a milkweed? Look at that. Oh, blue. Oh, it, it's going to flower. It's actually going to flower. We're just a couple weeks shy. God damn it. Look at that thing. Asclepia subulata. Magnificent bastard. Just just got rid of leaves. Only uh, maybe some vestigial leaves when it germinates, but there it is. You can see the diameter on this thing. Just growing it. Growing in a wash where it can get all the moisture, what little moisture comes, which is doesn't look like it was much this year. And then they get upwards of 10 goddamn feet tall. That'd be a nice one to see in a, a desert... Uh, uh, the front yard of a desert home instead of some uh, 
shitty oleanders in a lawn. Has anyone tried to grow this before? So look at this. This is kind of a shitty example. There's better ones I could have showed you, but I just thought to do it now. This is a, this is some nice sorting. See how you got those layers? All right, where the, the layers consisting of bigger rocks mean that uh, there was more water flowing, and it was flowing with more energy because it takes more energy to move the bigger rocks than it does to move the small ones. So that represents a large... Uh, when the when this creek right here, you know, however long ago, maybe a you know thousand years, maybe five hundred, maybe fifty years ago, who knows? Probably not that recently. When this uh, creek was moving fast enough with enough energy to move the big rocks, all right, and then it died down again. Then maybe you know a couple decades go by and you get another big flood right there. Okay, enough water. It was a hard downpour, a nice rain back in the year seventeen forty three. Okay. There weren't any, uh, weren't any uh, Europeans here now, and uh, weren't any Europeans here back then. Much nicer atmosphere, and you get that water just, just you know, moving fast enough and swift enough to dump the larger stuff. And it dies down. You don't get another one for, uh, well, actually up up there. It starts to. Uh, you got a couple more lines right there, but uh, you get, uh, you get the idea of what's going on. Pretty interesting to see that. Look at that. I didn't know there were any ambrosias that were insect pollinated. I thought they were all wind pollinated. But these fucking European honeybees are just going nuts here. And it makes sense too because I was looking at the flowers and I didn't see the little dangly stamens. You know? The little unfused anthers like uh, so many ambrosias have. So I says, how, you know, I says, how could that be wind pollinated? And sure enough, it's not. Insects are doing the work here. Out in the basins, out in the sands, this is a nice one too, another another P, another Fabid, Sorothamnus amorii. Look at those inflorescences, almost like a verticillaster. Got some bugs on there. Maybe they'll get picked off by a bird. You can see those little purple flowers. Like many Sorothamnus, it also has those orange glands, those smelly glands. You can see those little dots. Got to check it for the pillostyles, that parasite. You know, that parasite, that endophytic parasite that lives in there only bursts out of the stems to flower occasionally. Pretty rare. Look at how goddamn fuzzy the foliage is, though. Oh, look at that. Just perfectly adapted. Perfectly adapted to this hot and the dry. Hottest, driest desert in North America. The following footage is brought to you in dedication to Spoon's Restaurant, a Southern California chain. Spoon's Santa Ana, <laughs> summer of 19... It's a golden era. There used to be a pretty, pretty happening restaurant. It was happening. There was, there was, there, you could look out of that parking lot, there'd be a line of cars out there. Couldn't even get a spat. Having to have people park in a hotel parking lot just to go to Spoons. Parking in multiple hotel parking lots. And we'll call it Spoons. I remember that night. You know, and there were, I'm not going to lie, there were a couple times there were cop cars there every other weekend. Okay. And let's but it's because people were having a good time. And we'll say, and we'll say so. Times a cop cars were there, and a cops were on duty, but they would do some off duty activities. If you know what I'm talking about. Named after something. I'm here to Southern California. They got this Pat Pap. Show me that. How much saying, is in there? What do you got? Some it's kind that, of you're saying that's all Pat. It's Pat. You, this ain't the regular kind of orange Pap that you keep in the trunk of your cart. This is some. This is goofy Pap. It'll get you a little loopy. You're driving around, you're listening to progressive house music. Uh-huh. I don't know what this stuff, you just like that bass. That's what I do. you want to hear. It's just the throbbing rhythm sets me alive. I don't think we'll get rolled here. I'm driving a little kooky, but we we'll got to go right on Washington up there. Yep, keep following the cop. Ah, shit. No, turn right here. You don't well, want to do follow it? Well, you're going to follow them. What do you want to do there? Because we got we got to go back to the greenhouse. Interfaith community services. That's, you that's could, a sex cult for sure. If you, if I had ever seen it, look at a carpet club. Is it like the hair club for men? Yeah, it's like the rogue. Is that the okay, cop? So we go left here. It's not the cop. Oh, it is. We shit, keep going. The cop. I'm so shit. Shh. It's Don't okay. We didn't do nothing wrong. We didn't do nothing wrong. We didn't do nothing.